Jared, there are a couple of interesting articles going on at the moment because we're well off season starting in the AFL. But a lot of creative minds out there at the moment, isn't there? Yeah. This is where you really earn your dollars, isn't it? If you're if you're if you're a footy writer, I've seen some lists out there uh, <laughs> that whew, they are serious lists for this time of the year. Creative lists. You got one for me? Well, there's one. Uh, both of these from uh, News Limited. Yeah. Uh, Ralphie's done one, and the, the first one I want to throw up at you though is players who are training with clubs looking to get oh, yeah. one of those final yep. sup list spots. Yes. Uh, doing the preseason with. I had a Not, bit of a look at that today. Did anyone jump off the page no. at you? Is that right? Yeah. Not really. Um, so if you were in charge of a club or if you were at one of the clubs that they're training at, um, none of these guys are your itching to sign just at this stage. No, I, th- I think, um, was it Narkel at Tigers? Tiger yeah. Land? He's the one. I mean, the best player I think not signed at the moment is Sydney Stack. Yeah. But he can't, he's got some problems uh, outside of footy from what I read. But he's... I mean, he's the most talented by a mile. I couldn't agree with him more. And but he's, tough. He's not training anyway, which is no. staggering. So and sad too, because he is an out and out talent, and he's a hard nosed player too. Yeah. Like he gives real steel to any defensive unit. So Quentin Narkel was the one that uh, yep. I had a look at, and I thought, yeah, well, you know, there's a, there was a lot of chances down at Geelong. Maybe a different system. Mm. Not saying he can't make it. I mean, who would have thought that uh, the young bloke down at Geelong in the forward pocket that made the All Australian side. Tyson Stengel. Tyson Stengel was going to turn it around like he did. So, you, I mean, you, 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 there's no absolutes in this business, but uh, no. from what we've seen, I don't see anybody doing what Narkel did. Sorry, what uh, Stengel did. So, for Quinton Narkel, though, if you're in the best, say, 25 of, yep. the, of the reigning premiers, then you've clearly got some. I mean, he was eight games this year, played 16 the year before in 2021, had a 34 disposal game against the Gold Coast, a 25er against Collingwood. One thing that he rates a lead in is a disposal efficiency, which is, as we know, how important that is with yep. the footy getting faster and, and people finally listening to you freeing the Sharon. Well, the Sharon in his hands up, tends yep. to find a target. Well, but, that's why I think he's the, the pick of the lot. What about Liam Stocker at St Kilda? I haven't seen Liam do enough. Mm. I think... I think we'd have to see Liam play midfield to get a genuine guide and, and a, not just one or two games in the midfield, but I don't see him as quick enough to hold down a defensive post. Um, I don't see him as quick enough coming out of the back line and, and spearing enough with his ball work to, to be that. But I, I can see why Soss went for him. I mean, the kid can obviously find the footy in the middle of the mm. ground. And I think that's where he needs to go to. And would he be uh, – because uh, they've toyed with Hunter Clark going into the middle at St Kilda, but it seems like – but we don't know what Ross Lyon's going to want to do with Hunter Clark, but they've liked Hunter Clark coming out of defence. And, again, he's not quick, but he's a, a very, very sharp ball user um, and has some sublime skills at his disposal. But well, we've is, got a couple Jack Steele got... needs some help on the inside to you? Um, well, I thought Hunter Clark would probably go there. But, yeah. you know, if you've got Hunter Clark, he just, you know, he's not quick. No. He's not super slow or anything, but I mean, I think he's a fine player. I, I reckon Ross will play him through the middle of the ground. Can, can Does Essendon, I've got a one name that I want to throw at you from one of the draftees that missed, but does Essendon need a, a Tom Phillips? Was one of the prime movers for Collingwood in that 2018? I didn't mind Tom Phillips. Yeah, I could see Tom Phillips going to a side, uh, you know, maybe in contention that needed a hardworking wingman. I don't Training know Training with Essendon at the moment. Yeah. Well, they need a wingman. So mm. I think he'll probably get picked up and, I think he's going to be a pretty good pick. So, And when you look at Collingwood's defence... But one, one thing that he's got, he's got score on the board. Yeah. I don't know what happened at Hawthorne, but uh, it didn't work for him there. Well, and he was salary cap squeeze at Collingwood, otherwise he'd still be there, mm. most likely. Anyway, so he's got talent, so it's not a bad one if the uh, Bombers can pick him up for nothing. When you look at Collingwood's defence, they played a fast brand of footy with uh, Quaynor and John Noble coming yep. off half back. Is there a, we spoke about this briefly the other night, but Oleg Markov's been training with the defence and, and pictured running and running very well. I mean, his genuine speed, is that an extra element to make him even more um, <laughs> slingshot off half-back the pies? Well, he's got speed, so we know that. And mm. if he can get the ball in his hand and he can deliver it, well, then he's a player. And I mean, Craig McRae obviously thinks there's mm. something there. He's going to give him an opportunity. He may be seeing him as backup more than anything, but he's got some assets. But at this stage, it uh, it hasn't sort of worked its way through to holding down a position at two clubs now. There's another guy training at Essendon, Mitch Sabowski. Don't know uh, Mitch. From the Dandenong Stingrays, 186 centimetres, 86 kegs. Yep. Uh, NAB League team of the year. For the Vic Country this year, um, 27 disposals. 
How come um, he didn't get picked up in the draft? No real reason well, uh, from from they're the article. The sort of, they're the ones that you can really win big on. Yeah. A taller mid. Where's he training? But was one of the best performed for Vic Country. He's training at uh, at Essendon. He was an AFL Academy graduate. And, and a lot of people stunned yeah. that he... Oh, well, that's a good pick. ...that he wasn't on a list. So so you're telling me that Phillips and him are vying for the same spot? Could well be. So what do you do? Do you go, as you say, Phillips has got runs on the board. Yep. But this kid... And he fills a hole that the shock uh, they, of the draft. Des- they desperately need filling. Well... I don't know. I don't know with that one which way that uh, they will go, but I like their two picks so far. The other article, and there's a lot of those names that are what training are, around the other place. Ones? Any other names? A uh, couple other names that have uh, that are on there. So there's a few people that didn't get taken up in the draft, but there's a few Hudson brothers O'Keefe. of um, uh, Hudson O'Keefe, Oakley Chargers, Oakley Chargers, Hudson O'Keefe. I think he's at the Bombers too. Yeah, I don't know a ton about him. Uh, William Trent- Sarong. Brother, Brother of Rob. Caleb and yep. Jai. Uh, Trent Burgoyne, yeah, Peter Burgoyne's uh, young fella. Uh, his brother Jace is still at Port Adelaide, but he was delisted at Port Adelaide. Um, has real talent coming out of defence. Averaged 24 disposals and seven tackles. Yep. Um, or had a game, uh, 24 disposals, seven tackles against North Adelaide for Port last year that that, that turned some heads and, and impressed. Yep. Um, Tyler Brown's the only other one that uh, I know. We've seen him play some good footy. Uh, whether or not he can hold down a spot in Adelaide is... Uh, We'll wait and see whether he gets on the list. Played 27 games in five mm. seasons, uh, including 11 last year. So it was a bit of a surprise he got delisted. But well, Both of them? Yeah. See, see you later, Gavin's yep. dad too. Uh, his daughter is still on the list, though, at, uh, at Collingwood, okay. so the brown name still lives on. Um, the other article that Ralphie wrote was the most important contract. So who's which teams have got players coming out of contract and, and there's a ton of them, and mm. there's some fascinating ones. But I want to throw some of the younger names up at you, and just yeah, when yeah, I when I go okay. when I go through them, who would you be most keen out of this crop to sign? Right. So this is without notice, in no particular order. Tom Green from the Giants, Tom DeConing at Carlton. Well, I'll give you I'll give you a score out of ten. All right, yeah, let's do that. Tom Green, Giants, nine out of ten. Tom DeConing, Carlton, nine out of ten. Mitch Georgiades, Port Adelaide. Uh, seven out of ten. Oh, low! I would have thought seven out of ten is a big score. <laughs> That's well, seven out of ten. <laughs> All right, Noah Anderson, Gold Coast, ten. Yeah, I'm I'm a big fan as well. Sam Darcy, Western Bulldogs, because this is just his couple of years done. Well, first couple of years done. He, he's not going anywhere. No, but um, Cosy Pickett, Melbourne. Cosy's probably a. I mean, Cosy's a. He's a bit of a cult hero down there, so there's promotional mm. stuff as well. Um, Gives him something extra when they put him into the middle too, I, I've noticed. Yeah. Like he's he's probably a, a seven. Mm. Uh, ben Mackay, North Melbourne. Um, well, given North Melbourne's position, he's mm. probably a ten. Yeah. Uh, Tyson Stengel, Geelong. Well, he's a probably a, a seven to eight. Wouldn't be going anywhere. No. No risk of no. leaving. If Tyson Stengel fell over tomorrow, you're going to say, well, he's he's more replaceable than, say, a De Koning, mm. for instance. But he's a, you know, he's obviously an All-Australian forward pocket. He's had a fantastic year. So he'd be an eight or something like that. Jack Silvani's another at Carlton. Heart and soul player. Yep. Plays every everywhere. That's true, but he's he's not a he's not an eight or a nine. No. I mean, the, the game... I mean, the, the beauty of Jack is that he wins his spot every week. They dropped him out last year controversially. didn't work for them. He got straight back in. But, uh, I mean, he's coming to the end of uh, – he's coming to a point in his career where he's he's going to have to, you know, work really hard to maintain his spot. Let me throw a few more at you for the, of the a little bit older and even the quite a bit older. Darcy Parrish, Essendon. All-Australian, not last no, season. I'm a fan of Darcy before. Parrish's. Yeah. Yeah, no, big fan of his. Um. Jeremy McGovern is out of contract. The Big West Coast League, a million dollar player. I think I might be one A of the Jeremy McGovern bandwagon, actually. But uh, I mean, he just has to be signed. He will sign. He's a he's a West Coast lifetimer. Nat Fife out of contract at the end of the year. Yeah, just he'll has stay. so struggled. You know, it's been such a struggle for him yeah. to to stay out there. He'll stay. He might have to uh, 
drop a few hundred thousand. It looks dollars like he's auditioning day. for Chris Hemsworth body double in whatever the next oh, Thor he's film's going to be. Huge he's unit, ripped. isn't he? I mean, let's hope we see another couple of seasons of his at his best. Yeah, the dual Brownlow medal. One of, one of your fraternity, the Brownlow medal fraternity. Um, what about Jeremy Howe? Thirty-four years of age, uh, thirty-three in June. He doesn't play like he's thirty-three. I, I, I mean, he's a terrific player. Has been for a long time. And I think he just he signs and he's uh, he's at Collingwood for the rest of his days. Steve May out of contract at the end of the year, thirty one years of age. Oh, well, same deal. Yeah, none of those guys are going anywhere. No. Um, I'll tell you one that isn't on this list, but is out of contract at the end of twenty twenty four. Twenty twenty four. That's two years away. Yeah. Ben King. Yeah, there'll if be a I lot put of him in that about, list, yeah. if I put him in that list, well, it's like like Noah Anderson. I mean, there's yeah. three or four blokes there. That if they all leave, then all the work they've done under this latest regime has been for for nothing in reality. I mean, we've been through this before when Tom Lynch left and a couple of others. They've gone down to Tigerland and uh, won flags. So the heat will be on. The the incentives will be there. There'll be half a dozen clubs they can pick and choose. If they if they all go, well, you're going to have to ask the question: Will they ever be able to keep them? We spoke about Hunter Clark. And, and, the, and Brisbane can, so yep. that means the Gold Coast can. Should be Should able to be able as well. To. Yep. Yep. Well, I think Took Miller's a very big reason why they are still Took signing. Miller is an amazing player and an amazing clubman. And, yep. you know, if if they haven't named their best and fairest, if he can keep on playing the way he is and play in finals, lead them into finals, well, then he may get their best and fairest medal named after him. But, I mean, there was always the problem and always the issue with these expansion clubs. No mm. history. No history at all. And so Brisbane at least have been able to draw on the on the Lions history. And Brisbane's got premierships and, you know, great players of the game that have played there. So there is great history, great heritage mm. um, at Brisbane, but there's none of that at the Gold Coast or the Giants. But how big a lure is it to create it? Well, it's a lure, but mm. you know, once you're eight years through in your contract, you realise you're only here for a short period of time. Yeah, and at some stage, the incentive is there to go and play finals. Now, both clubs, certainly the Giants, have played finals. Suns have got some work to do to play finals. They're they're not there yet. I think I don't know if they'll make it this year, but uh, there are certainly a chance. And one last one, Lance Franklin. What about him? Well, he's out of contract at the end of the year. Well, if he wants to play, I think we won't go through the nonsense that we went through last year, particularly that uh, article that appeared from nowhere that uh, was written by a non-football person who he was going to be playing for the Brisbane Lions. Um, I think this will be his last year. Mm. And I'm not, not sure how many games he'll play, but... So we'll cherish every one of them. Yeah, why not? He's been such a fantastic player, so exciting to watch. He's a, a terrific person for footy and... Um, He'll be, I reckon, we hanging them up. Uh, there might be another invasion. <laughs> uh, for tomorrow, in your time watching footy, I don't want you to do it now, but could you go away and just say, if you had to spend your hard earned to watch five players over yeah. the time of watching footy, who are the five that you would oh, shell out? I wouldn't out? have to go away too long, too All right. far. Um, but of that group I just said, I want to ask you again of the young players, who would you be most keen to sign out of those young players? Tom Green, Tom DeConing, Mitch Georgiades, Noah Anderson, Sam Darcy, Cozzy Pickett, oh, Ben McKay. You slower than that. Tom Green. Yep. Tom like, DeConing. Yep. Mitch Georgiades. Yep. Noah Anderson. Yep. Sam Darcy. Cozzy Pickett. Ben Mackay. Tyson Stengel. Noah Anderson. Give me some time to think about it. <laughs> this is Sports Day.